What's up guys, today I'm going to be talking to you about ED3. ED3 is a dungeon that a lot of people like to do and it is very popular content in RuneScape 3 at the moment. Now, I know a lot of players also want to get into and learn ED3 as I do get the questions quite a lot about how to deal with certain things and during streams, people are always asking questions and asking how to deal with things specifically. So in this video today, we're going to go through some tips that are going to help you improve at ED3 and make your runs faster, make them easier and make sure you die a little bit less. Some of the things are going to be just efficiency things. Some some of the other things are going to be dealing with certain bosses and mechanics easier and then hopefully by the end of it you guys will find certain parts of the dungeon that much easier anyway if it helps leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new and let's go okay so this first tip is going to save you a few seconds every time you do the room which does add up over time of course not like hugely but it is just more convenient and to be honest it feels pretty epic to be able to do it as well so as you can see i've cleared off all the minions just so i can stand here and talk to you with a little bit of peace and quiet but what you would normally do is you would come along here and you would kill the two mages that would open the next barrier because there'd be a barrier just here and then you want to click just past this rock literally just past the rock once you click just past it you want to click directly into here to follow through on a diagonal and then once you're in the diagonal you can surge and blade a dive around this bend nice and easy i'll show you how it looks normally so you'd run up you would attack the little things and you'd move yourself just past the rock click over here surge blade a dive and you get yourself around really quick there's another way you can do it as well by surging past but that's a lot more consistent from what i can tell so that gets you through here nice and fast, and you can kill off the rest of the stuff and move your way through. Okay, so for this next one, again, I've reset the dungeon so that I don't have uh, a ton of people met, like attacking the crap out of me. And it just makes it easy for me to talk to you through it and just explain how it exactly works. But this one's nice and easy, and it does include Surge and Blade and Dive again. So just before the Crashing Leviathan, once you've got to this door here, it doesn't matter. You don't have to kill all these things. I've just done this because, of course, I'm stood talking. Um, but once you go through this barrier, what you can do is make sure you have your Ring of Vigor already on. And then with your bladed dive and your surge, once you're at this door here, you can actually bladed dive and surge just in front of his head. This way you can put your sunshine down in the middle. There's a good reason to do that and I'll talk about it soon once we get there. But first of all, you want to just basically click your bladed dive just in front of his head and then surge for forward straight away. And this will put you directly in front of him. We don't have our adrenaline for, for this now, but I'll just use an adrenaline potion. It's fine. I just want to be able to show you guys exactly what to do. Okay, so we've got our vigor on as well. We're ready to go. We're going to blade a dive and surge in front of his head we're going to sunshine and we're going to move to the side the reason we do this is because now the sunshine is in the middle when he does his head swing we can stand on each side of this we can stand here on this side and that will avoid the head swing from the other side and then we'll depending where he goes to begin with uh, i'll show you so if i stand over here now i'm still inside my sunshine and i'm also safe uh, from his hit we may take one hit no we'll, move, we'll be fine Let's move to this side and then we won't get hit again, but we are still in our sunshine. Meaning you can put out as much DPS as possible. And you don't ever need to leave your sunshine. You can just stay inside it. Don't take any damage from his head swipes. And it's all set up nice and easy for you at the beginning. You could, if you wanted to, uh, start off as well with like a, with a natural instinct. If you wanted to do that early on, you could use a dummy at the beginning. And that would be pretty useful as well. But uh, just getting the sunshine down in the middle definitely makes a big difference. This is the slowest kill of my life now, as I'm not overloaded. I've not used anything like an aura, because <laughs> we were just showing you that. That's cool. Let's move on to the next thing. Okay, so for this next tip, we're going to be talking about this bridge here and how to deal with the three things across the other side without getting absolutely mauled to death and also about melting to the skeletons on the bridge as well. So once we get this last button done, we'll talk about how to do that. Of course, when you first go through, you're going to want to use devotion and pray from range as the skeletons on the side are archers and they will hit you with range. So as you get closer, you want to chuck on your protect from range and then make sure you use devotion just as you go through. I hug this wall here, but what you can do at the end is you can use things like ice barrage and you can use sticky bombs on range as well if you wanted to, to be able to freeze them in place and that way it keeps it nice and safe for you to be able to clear them off. That way they can't get close to you and you can just keep them at a distance and you can get through this without getting mauled by the sea horrors. Okay, so I've just cleared off all the trash mobs around here for this next bit so I can show you again uh, how this works. But again... This is another bladed dive and surge trick so you can get through a little bit quicker. It literally saves you a couple of seconds, maybe three, maybe five at this point. But from here, you can actually blade a dive and surge from all the way across through the wall and it'll take you all the way to the other side. Then you can surge one more time to reach the end guys here. It saves you just a little bit of time. Pretty awesome to do and uh, that's, that's all it is. So what you want to do is as you've cleared the little the things here, you, you, the barrier will open. You want to click through and you want to click to where you want to go. And then once it lines up, blade a dive and surge, you'll go straight through. They're going to pull down because I'm stood still. What you can do instantly is turn and surge 
and you'll come up to the top and they usually won't move and it means that you can get up here pretty quick. Okay, so there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention about Tarakair. This is a boss that a lot of people struggle with, so I figured getting a few tips in here would be pretty helpful. And of course, this is going to be sort of aimed towards people who are learning ED3, okay? Because it's tips for people like to improve at ED3. And we're going to talk about this boss as if you don't already just fly through it and ignore all the, all the summons and stuff. If you're that sort of person who can just go through, ignore the summons, then you don't really need these tips. Feel free to skip forward uh, as there's not going to be that much useful here for you. As for the people who do struggle with Tarakat or just do it normally and would like to learn a couple of things that you may not know, then that's where we're going to start with this. So the first thing is you know that you're going to get two bloats, right? You're going to get one bloat over here that is going to smack you and you just need to kill him off. And then you're going to get the, the second one, which is a corpse carrier. What the corpse carrier does is it spawns a load of skeletons just like the rifts do. Now, the problem with this is if you just phase Tarakat as normal, he'll fly over here and summon the little uh, little first bloat and then you'll get a portal you need to kill the portal off then you kill the bloat off everything's fine it's not too difficult but then when he flies over to the other side and he spawns that corpse carrier you're going to get another portal with that and that is going to mean you have a portal summoning skeletons and you also have the bloat summoning skeletons and you can let things get out of hand very quickly because you get you're getting smacked by like a thousand units at once not a thousand but like a hell of a lot right so what you can do to avoid this is when you start the fight you can start over on this side of him, make sure you're stood on your right of him, and then you want to head in, and you can use the spell or the ability called Shock, or if it's on range, I believe it's called Demoralize, maybe, or Fear, uh, Demoralize. You could use the Demoralize ability on range as well, and what this will do is it will push Taraket one square this way as long as you are stood on this side of him. If you do that, this forces him to summon the Corpse Carrier first. If you deal with the um, portal before you phase him, then you won't have them stacked together. You can kill off the corpse carry nice and quick, and that way you can make your life way easier. So I'll show you how that looks, and then you can see uh, how I deal with it. And I won't use any specs like my Staff of Armadale spec or anything, so you can see the order that I would kill the portal, then phase Tarakat, and then deal with the the, uh, the corpse carrier. Okay, so we're going to put the uh, the overload on, and what we want to do is use this, the, the shock ability, to push him. And then we can use our sunshine. You can use sunshine first if you wanted to, as long as you push him before he's phased. That's all that matters. You can push him at any point, but as long as you do it before he's phased. And you're going to get the portal now. Because I was waiting, we are quite high health on Terra but that's okay. We're going to deal with this portal, make sure we get rid of it. Uh, any skeletons as well, you can use things like Greater Chain or Chin Chompers if you're on range to get rid of those. And then go back to DPS and Terra And he's going to now fly over here instead of flying this way. This will summon the corpse carrier so we can get ready over here to get rid of it. And as soon as it spawns, you want to kill that little pain in the ass. And we want to use things like AoEs. So on magic, you're going to want to use your bleeds. So your AoE bleed. And then use like your thresholds and stuff. And then if when he's spawned more uh, of the skeletons, use your greater chain. And followed up by more thresholds. Just to get this guy down. This is going to help you clear off all these skeletons as you're killing him. And that way at the end of it, you're not left with a ton of skeletons. But you can see how this didn't stack with other portals. Meaning we didn't get a thousand other little skeletons to actually come out as well. Which makes your life a little bit easier. So as you can see now, when we face him for the second time, he will fly over to this side, which he would normally go to first. And then uh, once, you've, once you've dealt with that, he's just onto the normal mechanics. And this guy is really not that big of a deal. You can just kite him around if you wanted to. He doesn't spawn anything. Uh, we may not even get a portal because we just dealt with one. So you can just you can just kill this guy off and everything is pretty easy from here out. For this next tip, I just wanted to make sure you were all aware that you can actually use the Undead Slayer Codex here as what it's going to do is increase the amount of damage you deal against Taraket and both of the bloats. So you can get through this nice and easy. You can save the cooldown for it for the corpse carrier if that is what you struggle with the most, or you can use it to DPS through Taraket and get through the fight a lot quicker. It helps out a lot, and honestly, if you do have one already, then it 100% makes you using it. But if you don't, and you have a fair bit of money, and you are happy to invest some money in ED3, these are around about 100 mil to a uh, give and take, maybe like 20, 30 mil, depending on what it's going at. But it definitely makes this boss fight a hell of a lot easier, and I would recommend picking one up if you can. I'm going to tie a second tip in here as it's going to be something to mention real quick and that is if you have crypt blue mama and animate dead this boss kind of becomes a joke as you can see here i have crypt blue mama staff of armadillo and i'm just soul splitting the entire thing so if you have this gear obviously uh, you probably won't be struggling with tarakat as much as uh, someone who's new but you can just soul split here in crypt blue mama animate dead and you can just change your staff spec to using blood barrage and you don't even need to move for the ghost or anything but for those of you that don't have staff of armadillo having crypt blue mama will still make your life so easy here it's so good it reduces almost like 
like freaking all the damage trust me it's fine if you have it chances are you won't struggle with this boss okay so this next tip for the ambassador is going to be something that is just going to help you save a little bit of food when you start the fight and you can kind of apply this to almost any boss in the game in all honesty however ambassador will normally attack with rain but one thing to keep in mind is when you do start the fight he will attack you with magic for the first hit in a solo you will get this every time in a duo or a trio it will be one random person in the group that gets the magic attack if you're too close together it will hit all of you but the point is if you go in here first with your magic prayer on and use devotion as the fight starts you actually will negate that nice and easily devotion will cost you no adrenaline because you don't have a target and then you can just go absolutely crazy wait for that hit to actually land and then change to protect from range so you'll block that big magic hit but you will also um have a little bit of damage reduction depending when you use devotion to uh, to be able to block a couple of range hits as well the final tip that I'm going to give you guys for today is once you do get to the second phase of the ambassador, which is where the spinners and the idols do come out, you can give yourself a bit of a head start by making sure one, you have a key bind for your target cycle. I'll put a screenshot on screen for you now so you can see where to find that in settings, but you just need to set one for target cycle forwards or backwards. It doesn't matter. You'll only need the one though. And then once you've got this set, when the idols come out of the ambassador during the phasing, you can press your target cycle as you see me do here. It will instantly change to one of the idols. Now, once you've targeted the idol, you can put both of your bleeds on one of these and then move on to the next one ahead of you immediately. This just means that by the time you get back around to killing that last one, it's almost dead and it won't take much effort for you to kill. This can save you a lot of time doing this and it means that if you do make any mistakes while you are running around, you do have that little bit of extra time to fall back on as the final idol is almost dead. Once you get faster at this, you can also use this extra time to use things like natural instinct to be able to get your sunshine or your death swiftness or zerk back up very quickly and then get plenty of thresholds off and get more damage out as well one final tip that i'm going to throw in here for you guys is throughout this entire dungeon you should be using weapon poison if you don't have weapon poison and cinderbane gloves you'll be missing out on a ton of damage so it's absolutely worth using i think there's a few clips in here that i forgot to use it but that's just because i'm recording but honestly weapon poison plus 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 and cinderbane gloves and even the incense sticks as well absolutely worth using you will save yourself a lot of time a lot of effort and hey who doesn't want more dps for literally zero effort anyway guys that is going to bring us to the end of this video i hope it has helped you out i hope you've learned something new and i do hope that this does help you speed up your ed3 kills if you are working on them if you're someone who is trying to learn ed3 then hopefully this helps you out as well i do have an ed3 in-depth guide if that's something that may help you out i will link it in the description below if i don't link it in the description just literally tell me in a comment and i will do it straight away as soon as i read that comment i forget almost everything all the time so my memory is not that good <laughs> anyway thank you all so much for watching i appreciate it channel members your names will be on screen uh, right now of course i really do appreciate that too you guys help out a hell of a lot so thank you very very much other than that thank you all so much for watching i appreciate that too and i'll see you all in the next one see you later guys bye